Today I'm going to talk about one of the most pervasive myths about intermittent fasting. That is, it causes malnourishment. I'm going to show you why this is not true and it's coming right up. Fasting deprives the body of nutrients. You hear this all the time, but from a scientific standpoint, you have to ask yourself, what nutrients are we so afraid of being deficient in? There's two general categories of nutrients. There's energy, which is like calories, and there's nutrients, which are macronutrients and micronutrients. And those include things like carbohydrates, proteins, fats, as well as micronutrients like electrolytes, vitamins, and minerals. Let's break it down. Are we afraid that we're going to have too little energy? Well, food energy is just calories, so that's generally the point of fasting if you're trying to lose weight or control type 2 diabetes, for example because your body has an excess of energy, you want your body to use it up. So we're not depriving the body of energy. We have excess energy and let's use it up. So are we depriving the body of nutrients? We can talk about macronutrients, for example. There's three different types of macronutrients. That's the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And which one of those exactly are we afraid of being depleted in? Fatty acids? Well, once again, generally people are losing weight when they're fast, and that's the point. So we're not running low on body fat. Is it protein? Again, if you look at most people who are trying to lose weight, they not only have excess body fat, they also generally have excess protein as well. And this is not just muscle. It's also the connective tissue. It's the skin. It's the blood vessels. It's the things that hold everything in place. Studies estimate that people who are overweight have 50 to 80 percent more proteins than somebody who is normal weight. And of course they weigh more and that likely is the reason why. Also, when your body breaks down protein, into amino acids, it has the ability to get that back through the urine. If you're not excreting a lot of stools, then you're not going to lose protein through that. And if your amino acids are coming back out from the urine, then you're not going to lose amino acids there either. So as you take less protein because you're fasting, if you do in fact get too low, your body knows what to do. It will take it all back. So the third category of macronutrient is carbohydrates. And you really cannot get depleted in carbohydrates because there are no essential carbohydrates. Essential nutrients are things that we need to stay healthy. There are essential fatty acids. If you don't get enough of those, you will become sick. And there are essential amino acids, which are from dietary protein. If you don't get those, you will also get sick but there are no essential carbohydrates. That's how people can eat extremely low carbohydrate diets, such as the ketogenic diet, and still remain healthy. So we've established that the fasting doesn't deprive our body of energy, and it doesn't deprive our body of macronutrients. So what about micronutrients? Micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. If you're worried that you're going to be depleted in vitamins, well, you have to be a bit more specific. Which one is it? Is it vitamin A? Is it vitamin D? Is it vitamin C? After all these years of fasting, we've never come across a case of scurvy during fasting or blindness due to vitamin A deficiency or rickets due to vitamin D deficiency. It's possible that it happens if you're very malnourished. But if you're very malnourished, you shouldn't be fasting. You should be eating. If you're trying to lose weight, then really you have overnutrition and really you can use some of that because you're not depleted in that. You can also look at the electrolytes like calcium, phosphorus, sodium, magnesium, chloride. Some studies of people who have gone and fasted for over a year haven't noticed 
any changes in the serum levels of these electrolytes. There are certain electrolytes that are good to replace because if you get too low, well, you might get problems such as muscle cramps. The most common one we run into a problem with is magnesium. And there are ways to get more magnesium that don't involve eating. You can actually absorb magnesium through the skin. And that's through Epsom salts, which are magnesium sulfate salts. You put that in your bath and you stir it around. You soak in the bath for about half an hour and the magnesium absorbs through your skin. If your magnesium levels are low, you might notice constipation and muscle cramping and taking some Epsom salts may help with that. There are also certain foods which are very high in magnesium. Sodium is another electrolyte that you can sometimes get low in because most of us are eating a relatively high sodium diet and to go from a high sodium diet to zero sodium, sometimes that transition is a little abrupt and it may make you a little lightheaded. You can easily take some salt and water or if you're taking a more lenient fast, you can drink some bone broth and add some salt to it. That also has certain other minerals like calcium and phosphorus, and that's a great option for you if you're having those sorts of issues. But in general, electrolytes are not a big problem if your duration of fasting is relatively short. If you're doing multiple days of fasting, that's really the only time that people run into trouble. If you're really worried about vitamin deficiency, you can easily take a multivitamin, which will replace all of your micronutrients, that is your vitamins and minerals that you need on a daily basis. And that's not gonna break your fast. People often also consider fasting as something unhealthy. This is a very recent phenomenon. Up until about the 70s, fasting was considered something that was very healthy. People would do this and they would call it things like a cleansing or a detoxification because it was healthy once in a while to let your body sort of burn through all that excess calories and other stuff like sugars and stuff that it didn't need. And this sort of cleansing process is good to do every once in a while. And it comes from the realization that we really need to have a healthy feeding and fasting cycle. That is, when we feed, we're taking in calories, we're taking in nutrients. When we fast, we're using those calories, we're using those nutrients. So it's a great balance. You have to feed and you have to fast. If you do too much of feeding, it's not good. Too much fasting is also not good. But now in the last 50 years, the pendulum has switched over where we think we have to eat all the time. People say, you should eat 10 meals a day. You should have snacks all the time. Eat small meals constantly throughout the day. What has done is destroyed the feeding and fasting cycle so that we're continually feeding and in the last 50 years, we've seen an obesity epidemic, the likes of which the world has never seen. What we're simply trying to do is put the balance back between feeding and fasting. The very word breakfast in English is the meal that breaks your fast. Well, you can't break your fast if you're not fasting. So it intrinsically explains that we need to have both and that's part of a healthy diet. So no, it's not unhealthy. No, it's not disordered eating. It's just restoring balance. Another thing people talk about is that fasting is somehow unsustainable or it's some kind of fad, trendy diet. Trendy or fad seems to imply that it's relatively recent and nobody's ever done it before which is hard to put that moniker on fasting, which has been around for thousands of years. If it's been used since the dawn of humanity, it's just part of us. It's not a fatty, trendy diet. It simply is something that has existed as long as humans have existed. We have the ability to go for periods of time without eating. And that's what we should do. So fasting simply does not deplete the body 
of necessary nutrients. It's not unsustainable. People have done it for thousands of years and it's not unhealthy. In fact, it's part of the normal balance that we're trying to achieve. Nutrients is a very vague term. It can include energy, that is calories, it can include macronutrients, and it can include micronutrients. And in all of those cases, fasting does not deplete our body of those if we're trying to lose weight. If you're underweight, then of course you shouldn't be fasting. But if you are trying to lose weight or control your type 2 diabetes or reverse your fatty liver, then fasting can be an excellent tool for you to use. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, share it with a friend. You might be able to help them too. And if you could do me a favor and hit that like button down below so that other people can find it, that'd be a real favor to me. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week.